Growl at the moon. On starry nights, when the moon is full and the air still, you can hear the clickety clack of train wheels turning. They echo over the hills and through the valleys, down calm canals and sleepy inlets. Everyone knows that these are the sounds of the night train. Tonight, however, another noise could be heard. Bear had been pulling the express well, but was concerned about the state of his engine. Fortunately, the fat controller had asked him to take the night goods, while Boko took charge of the express. Bear was delighted. He could finally slow his pace and have some quiet work for a change. On the night of his first run, a pea soup fog hung thick in the air. Bear was concerned about falling behind schedule, but his driver held him back. No use rushing about in this fog, he said, or we'll land ourselves in even more trouble. Bother, growled Bear. What will they say on the other railway if I am late? The trucks, growing restless, started to bump about. Smarten up back there, barked Bear. Oh, watch it, called one truck. We'd best not poke the bear. The other trucks howled with laughter, while Bear fumed, his engine rumbling as they crawled through the junction. If it hadn't been for the fog, Bear might have noticed a small green engine at one of the platforms and hooted a friendly hello. If it hadn't been for the fog, a small green engine might not have had such a fright. Oh, it was awful, cried a sleepy Percy next day. What was awful? asked Toby. It was, uh, well, it could have been, no, no, it must have been a, a, a monster, quavered Percy. Well, what did it look like? asked Mavis, who just arrived with some trucks. Why, I didn't see it, explained Percy. I, I heard it. Oh, it. It gave a long, slow roar when it passed, and, and it was laughing. Uh, all kinds of laughter at, at once. I'm sure it's still out there, and I'm not taking the mail as long as it is. Hm. Mavis perked up at this. Well, she said slyly, if you really don't want to, maybe I could take the mail for you? <laughs> you never miss a turn, do you, laughed Toby, always eager to go further down the line. Mm. Uh, I tell you what, he continued, Percy can take Henrietta for the day, I'll manage the quarry, and you can take the mail. Their drivers, the station master, and the quarry manager all agreed, and the engines set off. Percy was quite relieved not to be going out that night, but all the same, he was worried for Mavis. When darkness fell, Mavis set off with the mail train. The station masters greeted her warmly, and she made fast friends with Tom Tipper. What a lovely train, she sighed happily. Soon she reached the junction. As the vans were being loaded, she could hear something in the distance. A strange, growling sound. What's that, she whispered, squinting through the darkness. She needn't have worried. Pulling up to the junction was Bear. His engine spluttered and coughed, and the trucks shouted and screamed behind him. Well, at least he made it to the station, smirked one. Yes, barely, cackled another, and the yard echoed with the truck's laughter. That's enough out of you lot, Mavis glared. The trucks gulped and wisely subsided. I'm sorry for the racket, Bear sighed. Having some, mm, mm, some engine troubles again. Mm. I hope I didn't startle you. Don't worry. It's not me that you've startled, Mavis grinned. 
She told Bear all about Percy, and soon the two engines were talking and laughing like old friends. The station master interrupted. Richard is coming to take the goods on, he said. But Bear, you'll have to stay in the carriage sheds until the fitter comes tomorrow. Bear was very ashamed. Cheer up, smiled Mavis. You'll soon be right as rain. I'll tell you what, when I finish with the mail, I'll stay at the sheds with you. <laughs> A bit of company to brighten your evening, hmm? Bear did brighten up at this. When Richard left with the goods, and the mail had been delivered, the two engines settled in for the night. Bear told Mavis all about his journeys on the main line, and Mavis told him the best ways to keep bothersome trucks quiet. They talked until the sun came up, only being interrupted by a familiar whistle. Oh! Oh, Mavis, cried Percy as he pulled in with the first train. Ah, oh, ah, oh, I was worried sick about you. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, hello, Bear. Ah, oh, ah, oh, 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 did you see the, 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 the monster? Well, you're looking at him, she giggled. Oh, of course. Where are my manners, said Bear. Without another word, he roared his engine with an almighty growl. Percy jumped and bumped his train hard. Mavis and Bear couldn't help but laugh. Percy, however, couldn't see the funny side. He concluded that Diesels must have a very odd sense of humor indeed.